we can watch it back again on YouTube later. Um, if, if you want to have your camera on, you're more than welcome to, but um, you might show up in the recording. So I just want to disclaimer that to everybody. Your names won't show up or anything. Um, so we're all good there. But um, yeah, we can probably get started. Heidi, you can introduce yourself and go ahead. Oh, that's just so wonderful. Thank you, Ali and Rachel. It's really, really good to be here uh, with uh, all uh, above ground resins and um, above ground art. Sorry, sorry, got it. I think I'm just a little bit excited. I'm always excited to do these things, but um, I just wanted to say thank you so much uh, for inviting me to do this uh, demonstration and talk to you about LA Chem resins. I just want to say thank you to all of you who have taken your time to join up and find out a little bit more about Elichem Resins and also uh, working with um, Epoxy Resin Media and just Medium and just be able to do different things um, with it. I was sharing with the girls just before we got online that I have some pictures sent to me from a designer in Mumbai and she was actually casting some beautiful chairs with encapsulated flowers for a very high-end hotel using Elechem Deep Cast Resin. But before I get into um, just doing the demonstration, I would love to talk to you about our product lines because I think it's really important if you're looking at working with resin, and that was exactly a good example of it, uh, getting these pictures that I did this morning, is you really wanna know why you are choosing certain resins and also the brands that you wanna work with. Uh, because number one, resin is not inexpensive. It Epoxy resin kits are actually, you know, up there on the higher end of the um, art supplies. And when you do your project, you want to be able to ensure that you are going to get the maximum performance out of it. And, you know, especially spending that kind of money and depending on what you're trying to achieve. I call on uh, artisans all over Canada. I get um, people tagging me globally on Elechem resins. But I call on people who want to do a lovely craft for the afternoon, right up to people who are building, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollar tables with our product. And so I've really had to learn an awful lot about um, resin, what it does, its characteristics. And so I want to just kind of take ten minutes to pass that on to you. And again, uh, thank you very much uh, to our go above. You know what, I'm just having a hard time. You guys say it, but anyway, above ground art supplies, because I want to tell you one thing. Um, they were the first company to take Ellie Kim on since we came to Canada. And I'm very proud to say that. Even though I have trouble with the name, I can tell you right now that I'm very proud to say that coming from the UK, a lot of products, a lot of companies just go, well, you know, I don't know. We don't know if we want to deal with that so far away. And you guys uh, basically were uh, one of the first, you were the first to step up uh, in the eastern part of Canada to take on Elechem Resins. And I'm just super, super thankful and proud of you guys for doing that. So fast forward about two years. I wanted to start off with the history of the company. So Elichem Resins actually has been producing resins for the mining industry for the last 50 plus years. So for the mining industry, they were doing belt repairs, big industrial repairs. So when equipment was down, it would cost them literally thousands of dollars an hour for equipment to be down. So you really needed a trustworthy product in order to bind the belts and do those repairs in order to get back and uh, performing and doing the mining. And so it, it was, it's big money to be able to um, basically keep up with that industry and to be a high performer in that industry. So Elechem Resins has actually been doing that for 50 years. A huge part of the percentage of their business is still in mining. And what changed was about 15 years ago, uh, the, there's three sons, two sons are in the business. One moved to Australia and the other one, Aram, who I work for, uh, is in the UK. Now they went uh, out to basically promote their, their family uh, business. 
And it's interesting because Arab was a little bit more associated in the art world. And so what somebody came to him and said, you know what, we are doing this art. We want this clear coating. You know, can you, do you have something that we can coat with? So this, you have to go back 15 years. So came back with Total Cast. And uh, Total Cast is a one-to-one -one, uh, high performance UV stabilized uh, product. And basically that was developed to cover art. Now you think, well, that's really good. Now, this is a key. I went to Guilford and Guilford's just about 30 kilometers um, outside of Elikem. They have a huge art gallery. So Aram sent me there when I, was, uh, when I went there to find out more about the product. And they were coding their art, but their art was worth 15 to 20 to 30,000 pounds. Okay, so that's lots of money, 50,000 pounds, $50,000 Canadian dollars. So I just went, oh my goodness. Now, if artists trust them to cover that valuable art, not only the valuable art in dollars, but just their valuable art because of their passion, this company must be good. So I did a little bit more exploring. I came into this industry doing floors. And when I met Elikim Resins, they just said, do you know, have you ever looked at doing it for the art and the wood and the artisan designer industry? And I went, what, like artists do this? I had no idea. Apparently it was big in the 70s, but it was just so lethal that people couldn't continue doing it. So out of this, all of these other products that Elikim has, has is a derivative of the total cast. So I'm going to tell you what the difference is. So this is one to one. You can cast this up to about a half an inch thick, but it's also used as a coating. It has a short curing time or pot life. Pot life means the working time that you have to work with it. So with this, you have about 15, 20 minutes, uh, about 21 degrees Celsius. So more artists were getting into it and we just said, we don't have long enough time. And so Mastercast was born. And Mastercast, again, is a one-to-one -one coating. You don't wanna use it for casting, you wanna use it for coating. And what's really, really cool about it is that it offers the person about 30 to 35 minutes working time. This is what we're gonna be using to do our demonstration today. And the reason being is that when we do workshops or people are just getting familiar with resins, this one gives you the working time. It also has a really wonderful consistency. It's like the consistency of honey. And so when it's thick like this, uh, basically it retains the tints better. It holds the tints better and you can really actually work and create your design. So that's Mastercast, it's one-to-one. -one. Now, when I came on board, I said, we need to have a heat resistance one. So uh, lo and behold, shortly after uh, we got started or I got started about two and a half years ago, they produced a two to one, and this is Ultracast. I'll just hold that up. And Ultracast is very viscous. So it's, it uh, is not viscous, I should say, is very, it has the consistency of water. So it's very, very fluid. But the cool thing about it is if you're doing a huge design, let's say you're doing, you know, a four by eight foot table or bar top, et cetera. This is a wonderful product to use because you have 90 minutes open time uh, and you also can add all the pigments. It does not hold the pigment um, density as much as the master cast, but you are going to be able to cover and coat and this is a polymer um, fusion of epoxy. The curing time is a little bit longer. It's three to four days, but you have a long open time. So when we work with designers over the world and they're using, you know, doing big sheets of things, this is generally the product that they use. And the bonus is it resists heat up to 195 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty hot. Like that's the, the heat of a cup of coffee. So a lot of people use these for bar tops, coasters, et cetera, et cetera. In saying that you can use these coatings as well. 
And there is, I have used Mastercast on tile coasters and uh, basically it has not caused any denting when I put my coffee cup on it. But this one is kind of a fusion and it does help with the heat resistance and scratching as well. All of these products are VOC free and ASTM certified non-toxic. Okay, so, and lastly, this is the product of the lady that is doing that chair and the furniture in Mumbai. And this is our deep cast. And again, this has uh, got the viscosity of a water-like feel to it. It's two to one. I just wanna show you this cup, you can see, I'm, you know, I'm from Manitoba, so I'm a little bit inexpensive here, but that's the nickel underneath there. And uh, you can see how clear that is and how hard that is. And that's one of the things that really set us apart from other uh, providers and manufacturers is because I know from testing many different products, Elichem resins are the hardest and clearest in the global marketplace. And until somebody proves me different, I'm gonna stick with that um, uh, saying is that we really shine when it comes to the clarity and the hardness. In fact, we have a gentleman that he actually poured a four inch round sphere and he polished it up and he held it up to his eye and you I have pictures of it you can actually see his eye through four inches of diameter of the Elichem deep cast so when it comes to choosing a resin and you want to make sure that your project um, has clarity um, is highly resistant to yellowing and I just want to say that all resins will yellow over time, all resins. It's a matter of how fast they will. And so Elichem resins by far has had incredible results with longevity of years and years of clarity. And th that is the kind of um, decision-making process that many of our furniture manufacturers make, a lot of people that use clear will definitely stick with Elichem resins because of the simple fact they can really be rest assured of the longevity of the clarity and of the beauty of it. Then I'm just gonna turn a little bit to um, the tints and I'm just gonna get up here for a minute. So if you don't see my head, it's okay. So we have Instead of powders, Ellie Chem Resin actually makes their own tints. And if you can see this, it's a paste. And this is about as much as you need in about two ounces of post mix in order to get a really dense color tint in your post mix product. So that's the white. White's always hard. It's a very difficult color to get. Um, to get a really good white. We also have transparent, but I just wanna show you this too. This is also a liquid metallic and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna add these later to the resin so you can see them, but I just wanna kind of show you now that it's a paste, just a little bit cold, got a little bit of lumps in it, but the nice part is about these is that they can actually get cold and reliquify, but you can kind of see the beautiful metallic of this and we're going to mix it in cups and, and show you later what that looks like. Then the four powders that we do have are basically crushed metal. So they're not mica powders, they are actually crushed metal. And again, I'm going to just bring this up here, you can see this. And you're going to see the difference between this and the liquid metallics and what their function is, because I'm going to use both. And then we also have, I'm not sure if anybody has um, looked up the Resi Blast. Now this one's got finger marks all over it, but we can send a, a different picture of it later. But Resi Blast is a resin disbursement media. So in other words, if we put it in the resin, and I'm going to show you this as well, a couple of drops will create those beautiful cell-like uh, designs that you see in a lot of artists' work. 
And then lastly, uh, before I go on, so we have five colors in the metallic. We have about 24 colors in the resin based tints. We have 18 of the acrylic colors. And I just have to say that because we deal with designers all over the world, uh, Ellie Kim actually has the capacity to make 1,750 different colors of tints. Now, I know that Above Ground Art Supplies is not going to carry 1,750, but we just want you to know that when people have special projects, we can actually match their color and send it out. Now, this has a dropper on it. So when you look at doing charcuterie boards or river tables and you just want to have just a little bit of tint and you want to manage your colors, these are just perfect to do that because you can control the density of your color. And finally, we have this uh, beautiful, it's the photoluminescent cobalt blue. Oh, my favorite, you guys, I just finished doing a river table charcuterie board. It's just stunning. I just have to finish sanding it and polishing it. And I'm going to get it to the gang there and you'll be able to see it. But this, you just need, you know, a teaspoon again in about, um, you know, two ounces of post mix. And this product will actually retain light and glow for 10 to 12 hours. So it, what, even though we use it for art, it's actually not an art project product. It's actually an industrial product that they use to make uh, photoluminescent pebbles for the aquarium uh, industry. They use it for making glow-in-the-dark mining hats. Uh, they also use it for making um, industrial nose uh, tips for steps uh, so that people don't trip and fall. And all of it is uh, basically, you know, driven by this photoluminescent uh, uh, powder. And so Ellie Kim bought the rights to it from one of the um, engineers that developed it. And we're just fortunate enough that we can now have access to that product for the art industry. And I have, um, every time I'm finished and I have a little bit of product left over, I have these little cups and I fill them up and I put photoluminescent in it. And once they harden, I peel off the cup and I put them in my backyard in my planters and it just almost looks like a landing strip. It's just gorgeous. So I'm just going to go over a couple pieces and then we're going to get started. So just to give you an idea, this is one of the designs that um, I did in another uh, Zoom demo. And I just want to show you that I used our marooned, our white, and then I also used um, a bronze here, and that is the paste. And then here at the bottom, I used our mineral powder, which is the leafing. So it, kind of, it gives you, um, you know, a bit of what the differences are. And I, I have to say that you can't, you know, on Zoom, you cannot see the depth, but this actually has such a beautiful depth to it. You just, you feel like you can just jump right in. This is one of the first pieces that I did, and this is done with Ellie Glow. And you can see, I've done, I did this about three and a half years ago. It's on an inexpensive piece of board. This is so hard. I could basically take my keys to it. I don't have my keys here, but I have driven over it, I have dropped it, I have put it, I have taken it on about 100 trips with me. And you can see that it is so hard and amazing. The longevity of it is just incredible. And I hang this on my fence in the summertime and I get a beautiful uh, glow from it as well. Then for the designers out there, this is, a tiny kitchen cupboard, but I just wanted to show you that um, you can actually do art with Ellie Chem resins anywhere in your home. I am attempting to do my bathroom counter. I'm going to do my kitchen, uh, my uh, kitchen um, center aisle, and this is just a board that I picked up at the restore. This is a Benjamin Moore um, flat gray. And then on the inside, this is kind of wild, this red, but I just wanted to show you that um, the sky is the limit. 
I, whatever, whatever you can paint, you can use Alichem resins with. It's just phenomenal. And finally, this is a beautiful piece of walnut board. And again, this is done three years ago. I dropped it, I'm gonna fix it. But this is one coat, you guys. This is one coat. And again, I have scratched it. I've taken it with me. I've you know, been very hard on it just to show people the amazing durability and the hardness of this product. And if I turn it around, you can see by the drips here, this is three years ago, how clear that is. Now you won't find that in a lot of our competitors. And that's why I leave the board this way. Now, if you wanted to clean this up, let's say this is a coffee table at your place. It's all scratched up. Somebody dropped something in it and chipped it. All you have to do is do a light sand over top and basically do another clear pour over and this thing will pop like it's brand new. It's just absolutely stunning. So that's basically our demonstration for our product at work. Uh, and, and this will give you the longevity of its function. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually mix the product and we're gonna do a live pour. So we could probably take some questions at this time. I'm going to um, start mixing. I'm going to move this away. Okay, well, we have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, okay. Jojo for asked if those boards are heavy. What boards? Uh, the ones you were just showing, like the pink one and the, the blue bird one. Oh, absolutely. I'll tell you what. You guys sell them, they're not heavy. They, I don't even think they weigh a pound. So they're just, they're the round art discs. Yeah, and like the resin doesn't like add weight to it? Oh, absolutely not. You're looking at when it, it's self leveling and when it cures, I'm gonna just try and show this, it's 0 0.05 mil. That's, it's very thin, but it's very hard. And then um, Julia's asked here, are the products safe to apply indoor with pets in the same room? That's an excellent question. You know what, uh, when you are working with resin, just you know, to, to give you a good analogy, and I, I just use this, but the consistency is like honey. And if you know if you are working with honey, it basically just attracts everything there is around you. So when you are working in an environment, you want to make sure that it's dust free, pet hair free, um, sawdust, you know, free, because when you pour it, it goes on 100% beautifully, but it's the things that are in the environment that cause it to have marks and to bubble because it'll just encapsulate whatever falls on it. Does that answer the question? Um, Jane has asked, uh, what room temperature is required? Generally speaking, uh, so the question is, yeah, what, what room temperature, uh, generally speaking, and you know, we have a chart on all of this, I can send all this information out, but just to answer your question, anywhere from 18 to about 22 degrees uh, is a good temperature. So I'm going to start mixing right now. And I'm going to ask one of you gals if you somebody can time me for three minutes. So when I keep talking, I won't forget what I'm doing here. But I'm going to mix. Now I'm mixing up way more than I need. And there's a calculator, there's a coverage calculator chart online. I mix a little bit more than what I need because afterwards I'm going to just show you a couple of designs that I'm going to do on some tiles. And so that one, I did the, I did the hardener. Now I'm going to do the resin. And if you can kind of watch the difference between the flow. Can you see that? It's nice, thick product. And I'm going to start mixing it now for 30 minutes, 30 minutes, three minutes. So when I mix it, and when you mix any epoxy resin, the hardener weighs less than the resin. So it tends to pull in on the outside and the resin tends to go onto the inside. So 
you know, having a stick like this, you don't have to have a stick like this, but it, it's really good to be able to move your product in and around on an S format. And the reason you want to do that is you just want to make sure that you're binding all the molecules so that they're gonna start doing their performance the minute we start pouring. And it is chemistry and I don't know about you guys, but I skipped out of chemistry and so I had to relearn a lot of things when I got involved with Elichem resins. But I can tell you that it's probably one of the most user-friendly products I've ever worked with. I am the favorite aunt. When we go to uh, family gatherings, when we used to before COVID, uh, I would bring the products along and I've done this with my nieces and nephews. Um, if you're going to do it with young children, definitely had, there has to be some supervision because this, this product, uh, although it's safe to use, if it's ever ingested or gets on your clothes or drops on the floor, you have a little bit of a problem. And I often say to people, when you're getting ready to work with resin, wear your paint your clothes, even your shoes, take off your jewelry, um, because you know what, if, if you happen to get some of this on you, well, you're just going to have that design with you for the rest of your life or until you change that article. So how am I doing for time? You've got a minute and 15 seconds left. Oh, I can keep talking. <laughs> anyway. um, we have another question here, actually. Okay. Roseanne okay. has asked, can you reuse the mixing container? Oh, that's another excellent question. Yes, you can. And usually what happens is I'll wipe it out later. So how you clean up with this is with isopropyl alcohol. That's the best to use. And you can buy that at any pharmacy. It's about a 95% um, uh, um, proof, I guess, if you're talking about alcohol. Uh, uh, and it's the best way to clean this up. They also use this in surgical, um, uh, in surgical rooms in the hospitals. They use this to sterilize. It smells terrible. It's the only thing about this, about doing, working with resin that actually smells is using the alcohol, but it does evaporate. It's like vinegar, it will evaporate. But if you drop some on the floor and I have, when, when, it's, when it's in this format, you can wipe it up with this. If you get a blob on the floor, you can always try chipping it off. Uh, but this is the best way uh, to clean whatever you're using. And I'm gonna start pretty soon here. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you the consistency. So right now you say, Oh, look at it. Look, look, it looks cloudy. It's got bubbles. Okay. So what we're going to do is, and it does. And if I wanted to make it a little bit more fluid, all I would do is stick this in a bowl of warm water and you can actually make it a little bit more fluid. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this now in different cups and I'm going to add my tints. Okay, so I'm going to go with a white base and then I'm going to go with, I'm going to use some black and I'm going to use then two different types of the um, metallics just to kind of give you guys a, a different feel for how it works. And so I'm going to go with a lot of white. So I'm going to put more in this cup. Black, I'm going to put a little bit in here. And the reason why you want to just dispense it, even if you're not using it right away, is when you dispense it, it's again, it's about binding. So this is like, this is chemistry. So it's a, it's a chemical binding, bonding type of thing. So if you leave it in a cup like this, and I have, but I did it with a floor, it'll start cooking because it comes to a certain temperature. And basically when it comes to that uh, temperature for curing, and when it starts binding like that, it gets very, very hot. Now this will never get hot to the point where it'll start a fire, but it'll get really warm. You can feel it in a cup. So when I start my project, I just disperse it a little bit in other cups just so that it won't really start that curing process and it actually gives me a little bit more time to work with. So I just want to show you so here's the white and I'm going to put some in there and 
maybe I'll just leave the caps off. This is when it, this is when I get in trouble when I leave the caps off. But okay, and black. Where's my black? Here. It's called blackout, and it really is super black. Again, I'll use a bit of that. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of this silver. You might have to add some more post mix to that. And you can just see how beautiful that is. Just, it's just so rich. And we're going to mix up the black. You can just see how intense that is. And now the white. And I put in a little bit more than two ounces. So we might have to add a little bit more white for me to get the white that I'm looking for. Oh, it's doing pretty good here. I'll just keep mixing. Okay, so you saw how a little bit of white. Now, you know, when you, when you do other white mixes, I don't wanna pour it on my table, but when you do white mixes, you need to add a lot of white, but you saw how much I actually needed to use. And so now what I'm gonna do, and there's no right or wrong, no right or wrong at all. I just think whenever you start pouring, your artist inside, your creativity is just gonna move with it and it's gonna give you a lot of joy. Now, before I got started, I, I missed one step. You wanna make sure your project is level. And so I'm using this cradle board Okay, just an ordinary cradle board. And I put it on, I basically put four cups, uh, four of the shooter cups underneath it, the one ounce cups, and I'm gonna start pouring. Now my table here at home is pretty level. If I need to lift a corner at some point in time, I, I usually put a stick underneath, but the table's pretty level. If you're doing a project at home, uh, you want to be able to level your table or level your project before you get going because if you don't, it's all going to slide off to one side and you're going to lose a lot of your creativity the way you had planned for it to look. So I'm just pouring this over right now. And can you see this okay or do I need to move my laptop in a bit more? Can you tilt it down just a little bit? Pardon? Can you tilt the laptop down just a little I bit? Will. I will. Yeah, just hang okay. on. To it. Yeah. Like that? That good? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do is move this around. And, you know, sometimes if you prime it with gesso, it moves a little bit faster, but generally what I do is I take a heat gun and I just kind of move it around. I'm just going to put the rest on it. So now I have my base. Do you have time for a question? I do. Okay, Marie asked, uh, do you also clean the plastic cups or do they just go in the garbage? I just throw them in the garbage. Generally, I buy very expensive. And you know what, when you're at home, if you use a yogurt container, let's say you put some, this is post mix and white and you used like a yogurt container, all you do is leave your spoon in it. And the next day you pull your spoon out and then the, the entire form will come out and you can actually use your yogurt cup again. When I'm traveling and doing a demonstration, I tend to use these because I do a lot of them and it's hard to, you know, uh, save the containers when I move around a bit. But um, anyway, so here we got this beautiful white base, okay? Now, this black, I wanna show you how cool this is. We're gonna take the Resi Blast and I'm just gonna put a couple of drops in, okay? One, two, three, that was about three and a half, right? I'll just put this aside and we're gonna give it a stir. 
Just a quick question. Uh, Jojo's asking, what tool are you using to spread out on the uh, on the Canvas board? What was I using? Yeah. Okay, so I put the um, titanium white. Oh, the tool to spread it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, what? The tool to spread it, the little white tool you're using. Oh, that's just a plastic, uh, it's a plastic clear spoon. Okay. You can use, you can use, um, Oh, like a trowel, a, a um, plastic spatula. Um, I'm going to just show you a couple of different ways that you can maneuver this product. But the first thing I'm going to do is just, I'm going to start off by dropping a piece of black on this beautiful, beautiful palette of art. But I'm just going to pour this and just watch, let you watch what an amazing design this is going to make. Now there's lots of different ways. I'm gonna try and move this closer here to me. There. So there's lots of different ways you can, you can start creating your art. But what I like to do is you can start seeing that the cells are forming here at the edge, right? Can you see that? Hard to see, so I'm just gonna turn this around you can start seeing the cells form and they kind of take their time you can see that they're starting to develop now and the different ways that you can maneuver this is i you know i use a lot of these coffee stir sticks i like them they're wood you know um they don't put a lot in our you know, in the garbage dump, I like it. And the nice thing you want to know about resin, it's self leveling. So as you can see, one of the ways that I'm moving it around, I'm pulling the black with the resi blast. I'm just moving it through here. And you can just see that I moved it. I'm trying to show you this there. And the cells are developing like crazy. So I'm just going to keep doing that with the rest here. I'm going to take the stick. And I'm just going to create, again, haven't done this before. I mean, I've used these colors before, but I haven't done exactly this before. And now I'm just going to kind of sit. And again, you can just see these beautiful cells developing. I'm just gonna kind of sit with this and see what it does. And if you excuse me for one minute, I forgot to plug in my heat gun. I'll be right back. So the other way that you can manipulate your product is with the heat gun. So I'm gonna put this on. My guns are so sticky. <laughs> anyway, just look what a little bit of heat can do. Whoop. Isn't that just stunning? Try and turn around this way. So now we've got most of our board covered. And now comes the fun part in doing some of the silver and metallic accents. 
And I'm, I like to run my colors kind of into one another. And so I'm gonna just do another line in this black. And I think I'm gonna just do a little corner here. We have another question here. Um, Go for it. Jane is asking if you use the resin as a clear coat for a painting, will bubbles occur? If so, how do you remove them? Do you require a torch? That's another really good question. I'll tell you what, resin in itself, when you looked in that cup that I showed you, our resin does not bubble. What makes resin bubble is when you've A, overmixed it, undermixed it or when when you have debris around and it's amazing how little specks of dust or let's say you know a lot of people use mica powders mica powders get caught up in the resin and so they cause these little bumps but if you're doing a clear coat if you're mixing it and you are free of debris in your area you should get a solid finish like that like what i showed you in the cup now, if you do get bubbles, it's very easy to repair that. You just take, um, you know, like a maybe a, a light sanding brush and you sand out the bubble, you sand out all over your, your picture and you're going, oh my goodness, like that's gonna ruin my picture. Actually, it doesn't. Uh, once you sand it lightly, and I'm not talking like a huge sand, just, just so that uh, re resin needs something to grip onto. They call it tooth, resin needs tooth bite into. So you just do a light sand. And then what you do is a clear pour, and it should just make everything pop. I have redone work that, like you said, like I've been scratching and doing all the different kinds to it. I have redone that work. And all I've done was just do that light sand, um, add, you know, a clear coat over top and make sure that it's covered uh, so that no debris gets in it. And I'll tell you what, it, it looks like brand new, like brand new. And, you know, especially when, if you're working on a kitchen counter, um, I always say to people like, I love experimenting. I mean, I don't know if anybody is out there like a DIYer like me, I like changing my furniture around, painting different colors. But the really cool part is let's say I did a counter like this, and then I go, you know, a year from now, like, whoa, whatever possessed me to use like white and black, right? I wanna use red and orange. Well, I just basically go over it. You can gesso uh, a primer, you don't have to, but I just think you use less tints if you do, and you can just create a whole new look. And it's just absolutely stunning. I have a friend, she had, uh, we got into this, she's in Ed Edmonton. We were doing a bunch of projects on her table and uh, she's, you know, she said, I wonder if it would work on my granite counter. And I said, well, let's go have a look so somebody had dropped a bottle I think it was a wine bottle what a waste but on the corner of the of the quartz or not quartz uh the granite countertop we put a tape in we filled it with master cast we matched the color because it was a black counter black marble counter you could not tell the difference where we had repaired that and it's still there to this day it's just it's absolutely fantastic so now I'm going to, my hands are just completely sticky, but I'm just going to show you just with the Resi Blast and adding the silver. And I wish I could, I honestly wish you could see the depth of this. It's just beautiful. And now I'm going to add the silver leafing. The, I'm doing this in black and white, you guys, but to me, I love bright colors. If it was me, I'd be doing red and yellow and purple, but I just find that when I do a demonstration, it's really nice to show the basics of Elichem resins and what they can do. And now I'm just going to do the final touch. And I already did. This is a this is the crushed mineral. And I want to tell you something. You never want to sneeze while this jar is open because I have sneezed, got it all over my work, all over myself, and wore it for basically two weeks. But I am just going to do a light touch. Just see that I'm using a teeny weeny bit. Another couple of questions here. Yes. Um, Jojo's asking if she's interested in hanging it outside, can you use a plastic board or a metal board instead of the wood one? 
Oh, I love that. You know, there's so many things to consider when you do this, but I just want to tell you right now that Elichem resins can be applied to everything, stone, mirrors, glass, um, tiles, uh, wood, MDF actually works great. You can apply this to anything except for silicone and rubber. Silicone and rubber, it repels. Anything silicone. So if you use a silicone uh, primer, you'll, you'll find that it'll, it'll resist it like oil to water. Um, but you can, you can put this outside. In fact, I have completed a couple of projects like that bird that I showed you uh, was outside in Winnipeg at minus 40. I also have, we also have a product that's new that's coming out, but I tested it before, um, uh, before our snow came. Uh, it's called ResiCreek and it's a cementous product. And when you trowel it, 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 it is resin, but it looks like concrete. And I actually applied it to a plastic uh, planting jug. It was just ugly, like one of those ugly ones that you buy a plant in. And I'm, you know, later on, it's a little bit too soon, but I could send pictures of that. And I have left that outside uh, to test it at minus 40 to see what happens. Now, resin, you have to understand, resin is plastic. It's not meant to be in minus 40 weather. It is meant to use it for art, for tables, for different things. However, my experience has been that it's very durable. And as long as you look after it and you cover it, because it's, again, if it's in the sun a lot, you're going to have a change of perspective, not a huge one, but you might have. And um, uh, what you want to do is just make sure you look after it. And some of the things that you make that you really appreciate and love, and you're not going to redo in the spring. Well, those are the things that you bring inside and look after them. But yeah, uh, you could definitely... What you want to be careful of is you want to make sure that you don't, um, oh, no, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, you want to make sure that you want to have everything, yeah, if you're working outside, you want to make sure you have plastic around you uh, because you don't want to have the product um, or bugs. I, I think I did a project outside and I had a bunch of flies in them and I sanded them off and just covered them up, but that's what will happen. So here's my fin, there's the surface part. So here's the silver, that's the leafing. This is all leafing. This is the silver that comes up in veins. It's just absolutely beautiful. And that's the white and the black. That's how thick it is. Now in Europe, they love the side drips. And it's hilarious because the first thing I did was I wanted to like a cake, right? You wanna run your finger along the drips. Well. It's a no-no in England, but I find that us Canadians, we just totally have to get rid of those drips. So basically what I do, and you can use a brush for this, I like getting my fingers in here, is I just dip my fingers or any product that's dripped around the sides, I just finish it off like this. And then anything that drips over the sides just becomes a beautiful mixture of what's in there. And you know, you'll have, I'll have silver drips, I'll have white, black, and it'll just kind of go over top of this and it'll look really, really cool once it cures. So this particular piece is gonna be dry to the touch in about four to six hours. So that's pretty cool. Now you can do anything to resin, to our resin that you would do with wood. So if you wanna, if you want to drill through it, if you want to cut it for some reason, you know, if you want to, um, uh, let's say you want to incorporate a hook or something, you want to drill in it, I would probably wait 24 hours. Uh, seven days is a really good time to leave something cure. But all in all, after this piece cures, not over, see? Uh, the other thing I'll have to tell you about resin is uh, the other biggest problem is learning when to quit. <laughs> there we go. I have literally dropped my reading glasses, you guys, in this. And a big blotch, and I cleaned it out, and I put some more on. This is an hour later, and it turned out beautiful. So right now, I would say that Heidi from Ellie Chem Resins, it's time to quit. Here is the beautiful piece. 
And I just want to say that anybody that emails in uh, after this, emails into Above Ground Art Supplies to Ali, um, this is going to be a gift sent out for you. Okay, so we're going to do a draw and somebody's going to get this piece. Now I'm completely covered with a little bit of resin. And again, I'm going to take the isopropyl, isopropyl. I just put it right on my hands because you guys, it's the same product that we're putting on our hands for COVID. Like seriously, I should just bathe in this every day and I would just be totally fine. So I'm going to just move this aside somewhere and uh, we'll just see if I can find a space to move it. So we have a couple other questions here if you want me to start asking. I'm just going to move this because I'm just going to show you. Okay. Now I have leftovers, so I want to show you what I'm going to do. Just go for it. I can hear you. Okay, so on a continuation to the last question, uh, Jojo just wanted to know if you can use the resin on fiberglass. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And you just want to make sure like anytime you try a new surface, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you try a sample first. You don't want to, I have customers who've started, you know, they've, they've done a couple of projects and then they'll do this huge project without testing the properties that they've included, the elements that they've included and what they've wanted to do. And they just come out disappointed. And so, you know, I just highly recommend if you guys are looking at fiberglass or a different project, just get a piece first, mix up a little bit of the resin, you know, test it on that product because sometimes even with myself, I get wood pieces and they have an oil base in them. And then lo and behold, I'm working on them. And now all of a sudden the Ellie Elechem resin is repelled, uh, repelling it because it's got a, a wax or a silicone coating on it. And yet to me, it looked like a plain piece of wood. So the key is here is to always test your, your applications and your products before you get involved uh, with doing the, the, the main project. And I can tell you that'll save you so much heartache, money, and, um, you know, chances are your, your, project will just turn out so much better. Now, I have a piece of tile here. These are just bathroom tiles. And when I have product left over, I like to make, um, you know, I just like to make a couple of different things. And I'm going to just put this in there. And I'm going to put uh, a little bit more white and I should be using gloves, right? My hands are so sticky, they probably wouldn't get in them. It's always good to have lots of gloves around. I did a workshop out in, uh, in Manitoba. There was lots of space and I did a presentation uh, to a group and uh, uh, they had uh, wood cookies. I brought a, lot, a bunch of wood cookies along just so that they could practice and lime greens with gold metallic, um, blues like oh my goodness like you know what everybody that I have come across just has this whole different approach to resin and it's just so amazing so I just want to quickly do this here So you can see how beautifully fluid it is. And I can tell you right now, it's getting a little bit warm. I can feel the warmth. Um, this will not, it generally won't start on fire. I have with the torch started it on fire because I think, you know, if anybody could do anything, it's me. Um, but I blew it out and actually the look that I got later was just incredible. But uh, generally plastic will just smoke uh, if it is exposed to fire. And again, I'm just gonna pour a little bit of black over here, a little bit of my silver. And I'm just gonna let it work itself. Oh, 
over. Look at how easy that was, eh? There's a couple more questions here. Do you want me to ask them now? Yes, absolutely. I just want to show that with leftovers, look how many of your family members could get coasters. It's just amazing. Okay, go for it. Okay. Um, so Jane was asking about removing, or actually, no, hold on, I'm too far yet. Jane was asking about removing the drips from the sides, which you kind of covered, but she asked if you could tape it first. Absolutely. So um, people use different things. You can use some um, um, packing tape uh, is a good one. Uh, tuck tape, which is a bit stronger if you're doing a heavier project. Um, for a small project like this, you could even use like a scotch tape, any cellophane tape, and you can tape it around and it's self level. So whatever you pour into it will self level to um, how you have that piece leveled. So absolutely. If you don't want the drips, I just actually worked on a coffee table yesterday uh, that I'm doing a, a, a video on. And um, I knew that I would be painting the rim around it. So basically when it was curing, I just grabbed one of these sticks and for about an hour, I just kind of walked around and grabbed the drips, but I thought it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna sand those off and then I'm gonna paint a gold metallic around the rim. And uh, I've got a video coming out on that. So uh, once that's finished, I'll forward it as well to you guys and you can pass it on. Um, there's lots of different things that people use like for our charcuterie board. We used a plastic tray uh, to as a mold. Uh, you can use silicone as a mold because it repels it. So if you wanna buy a bunch of silicone and make your own mold, you can do that. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do to kind of create your look. And uh, yeah, so if you don't want the drips, yeah, cover it up with some cellophane. Uh, if you've painted a room, you know, they always say to take the uh, um, baseboard tape off before it dries, because once it's dried, you've got to get in there with a the knife and you create a whole bunch of work. Uh, the same principle applies to this is that once you finish your art, you want to wait about an hour till it's, you know, hour or two when it's tacky. And then you just want to slowly remove your tape uh, and that will save you um, uh, the headache of uh, my first uh, one that I tried where I had to take an exacto knife and it was just a nightmare trying to get the tape out of the epoxy. So, yeah, so there's just little tricks of the trade that you learn, but it, I, you know, there's, there's why I use the analogy of honey is because it helps people understand, okay, this is going to be thicker. Uh, water, this is going to be thinner, you know, um, it, when you're spreading this, it's like cake decorating, when you're painting, and you want to remove tape, it's like using, you know, removing tape off of the baseboard. There's lots of analogies. Um, but I think that the big thing is, is that not to be um, nervous about it. I have had, you know, young children I've had so the my the youngest attendee I had was a grandchild of six the oldest person I had was 92 they all did amazing beautiful projects it it the the biggest thing that if I could accomplish anything out of today is that it's so much fun to work with it's therapeutic it brings you joy and you know what try it try it on the smallest thing on a bigger thing but if you've, if you've kind of been thinking, oh, I'd love to do this, but I, I really, you know, I don't want to mess it up. Very difficult to mess up because really your first piece is your creativity coming out of yourself. And then where the experts come in is that they learn how to manage the product, how to manipulate it to how they want it to be. So again, if there's anything that can come out of today is that LA Chem resins are amazing products. I have seen so many applications, thousands of applications. You can, you know, you can use it for decorating your house. You can use it for art. You can use it. I, I, I use it for repairing my shower stall. So there's a lot of different things you can use it for. But most of all, it's a wonderful way to explore the artist in you, even if you've never done anything before. And I can attest to that because I started with floors. So I hope that answers a lot of questions. 
Uh, also, I just want to let you know, we do have um, a lot of questions that people ask. I've made a question and answer sheet. I can send that along to Above Ground Art Supplies. Look, I can say it now. I can say it now because I'm the last. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and I can send it to them and they can forward it to you. And I hope, if anything, that this will inspire you to give it a try and see what you can create. Thank you very much, you guys, for hosting me. I, I just had such a good time. It's very difficult not getting the feedback live, but I'm just thankful for all of you who joined in and took the time and uh, just hope you have a good time with us. Yeah, of course. Thank you so um, much. Did you want to answer a couple more questions? I sure in do. Here? I have yeah. time. I'm just going to move this so I don't take a sip out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds good. We don't have too, too many in here, um, but okay. Bill has asked, um, if I have a grouted tile surface and want to make it level, then do a resin top coat. Is there a particular product that you would recommend to first level between the tiles? Okay, so um, let me just understand this. So the tiles are grouted or not grouted? Um, they, I believe they are. She they said grouted, grouted yeah. tile surface. Does the person want to make it level? Yes, she's going to level it first and then um, well, she's there, asking if there's a tool that you would recommend to first level between the tiles. So maybe yeah. fill the, the holes. Yeah, I guess it depends on the project. Um, so there's a couple of things. If there is an edge to the project, uh, definitely the person can tape it, create a barrier and pour deep enough with um, total cast. You might want to use total cast if you're using just like, let's say if you're just wanting to use like a a third inch uh, depth, uh, then you could cover it uh, all in one go, okay? But if you wanna do different things and do the tiles differently or different colors or do them, section them off, then I would say, yeah, you wanna probably level them because it'll be easier in the long run for you. Does, does that answer the question? Um, I think so. Jill, does that answer your question? <laughs> Let me write, write again another question if you want some clarity afterwards. We'll just move on to the next one for now. Okay. Um, Jane asked, do you want to tent, do you tent your project after the pour to avoid dust? Do I? Tent it, like cover it with something? Um, yes, I do. Generally, I have, um, depending on what I'm working on, I put a plastic dome over or a box just anything to keep uh, dust from flying into it. And I'll make sure that the, 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 you know, that it's clean. I do have a lot of plastic storage bins around. And actually I find those are great just to kind of put over stuff that I'm working on. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, there's a couple more here, hold on. Uh, Roseanne asked, can you put acrylic or other pigments into the resin to make color designs? That's an excellent question. Well, actually, uh, our resi tint uh, are acrylic based. You can use, you know, one of the things that's really cool about Mastercast in particular, you can actually use paint like wall paint. You can use acrylic paints as long as they're not silicone based or um, oil based, you can use them. What you want to remember is that, and people use ink as well and different, there's all different kinds of mediums that people use. The rule of thumb is when you weigh out your product. So let's say you weighed this out, your post mix, and it's 200 grams, okay? You don't want to exceed more than five to 10% of an additive to the weight of what you have in your cup that you're, or cup or pail that you're using. And the reason being, it will offset the chemical imbalance of curing. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So. I always say to people too, like if you want to mix different things inside of this and kind of get a feel for it, please do like a little test, you know, project first. And then you're going to find out how that item reacts to the resin. Uh, one great example is wood. Okay, people, they encapsulate wood and flowers and do different things, but you have to prep it. If it has air or moisture or dust inside, you pour the resin over that, well, it's just going to all float up in the resin. And then you're going to say, well, look, it's bubbled and it's got imperfections in it. Well, the resin actually doesn't. It's what it's pulled out of the article. Okay, so I hope that really helps. But yeah, you can. I even think some people have used some uh, portions of oil paint, like 
like artist oil paint and they've kind of made different colors and put it together. Test it first. I always say to people, test it first, you know, because that way you know what's going to work and what's not going to work. Okay, great. Um, I think that was pretty well all the questions. If anybody else has any other questions, you can write them in the chat now. Um, but yeah, I think everybody seemed to have enjoyed the, the demo. It was really nice. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Uh, there's so much to cover. I honestly have to say that you know, some of the times I forget this and I forget that, but I can say I'm very accessible. You just get a hold of the girls, they'll email me and I will answer, like, let's say you come up with a couple of questions you wish you would have asked. I'd be happy to answer them. And, you know, when we start, when it opens up and I start traveling again, I am just looking so forward to coming to um, Above Ground Art Supplies. I've been to all three stores. I've done demos there about a year and a half ago. I was planning to come last summer that kind of got kiboshed. Uh, hopefully things will open up soon, but I'm more than happy because to me, this is when you're investing in this, this is an experience that you want to, you know, find joy in. And I find joy in, in seeing other people's work. I get emails from different artisans every single day. Look, Heidi, look what I did. Look what I did. And these are outside of Instagram and Facebook. Um, and every time I see them, I'm just blown away. Like, wow, like you did that? Like, get out, really? And I'm, you know, just very fortunate in this job uh, that I have this opportunity to spread a little bit of this around. And anytime that anybody wants to get in touch with me, you feel free. It's Heidi at elikim.co.uk. I'm happy to get back to you. And uh, might not be right away instantly, but I will. And again, um, my hope is that if you have tried it and haven't had a good experience, that you would try Elichem and give it another chance. If you haven't tried using resin, I suggest you try Elichem Mastercast resin. And um, you know what? I have created a lot of resin addicts and I'm looking to have a lot more join the club. <laughs> So anyway, thank you so much. And again, if you forgot to ask something, feel free to email them. And I will be happy to get back with anything that you missed uh, thinking about at this time. Yeah. Thank you so much, Heidi, for, for this demo. It was really great. Oh, I really enjoyed it. And I have to even tell you one more thing. Uh, we were talking about weather before everybody came, came on. About two weeks ago, it was minus 50 with a wind chill here. Oh, and it was just brutal. And today it's like <laughs> plus five. And I think Sunday's going to be uh, 10. And like I, after this, I'm going out to shine up my barbecue because <laughs> I'm going this weekend. So that time. everybody, I wish you a fabulous weekend. Thanks again, guys. Sorry about fumbling up the name at the beginning. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. It's a long game. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Everybody. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.